Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. Going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Day 10 will take us to the 1st of March. Can you believe that? First day of March and first day of Meet Joshua Spring. Um, and I shall get on that for you in a moment. So just to say that the first video you say was our 6 a.m. upload. So check that one out if you'd like to do that. Please like, share, subscribe the videos. And thank you so much, everybody. Uh, you know, that was a little bit of controversy the other day, uh, or was it yesterday, uh, about 6 6am upload. Apparently, uh, one or two people didn't realise that I recorded 6am upload the night before, but uh, that's always been the, the process, right, since we started doing, like, the 7am and 6am upload back uh, last spring. I record back the night before, upload it, schedule it, and uh, and then it's released, you know, by YouTube um, at 6am. Uh, so, well, I'm sorry if anybody didn't know that, but you can see the time and date, uh, you know, on my computer, actually, in the bottom right-hand corner. So all you've got to do is enlarge the video, have a look at the bottom right hand corner and there it is the time of day so there's no uh you know there's no misleading going on it's uh, perfectly viewable and visible for everybody to see on the videos when they are being uh, recorded but in any case uh yeah it's all good so uh, thank you so much everybody uh, for tuning in and please like share subscribe on the vids and thank you so much everybody for doing that Right, so just begin uh, in terms of uh, the stratosphere. So this is how temperatures are currently looking at 10 HPA uh, from the GFS via Metrociela.fr. So we've got these blue colours here over top of the Arctic and over top of the North Pole as well. These are the cold temperatures at 10 HPA. That's what's fueling the polar vortex, uh, you know, at its roots in the stratosphere. Now we're looking to see if we're going to get a warming of the stratosphere. There is going to be quite a significant warming taking place there um, around 24. Of February over northern Europe and the North Atlantic. So, does that push up into the pole? Let's have a look. So, no, so this goes up towards Russia and into Siberia. It doesn't actually go into the North Pole uh, itself. As we push through into the more extended range with this GFS run, you can see that eventually that warming, albeit moderated, does start to push from Siberia towards the uh, North Pole and Greenland area starts to displace the polar vortex at its roots, these blue colours, they get displaced and pushed out into northern parts of Europe. A significant warming of the stratosphere is on the way for the end of February, beginning of March. I'm not sure if this is going to reach a sudden stratospheric warming, but a significant warming of the stratosphere is coming. Um, and this will have a dampening effect on the polar vortex as we move into uh, the spring. As we have such a strong polar of vortex and zone of wind, if we get a deceleration of zone of winds, maybe we will start to set up like a blocking signal uh, later on into the spring. It'll be interesting to see what uh, what the impacts of this are. But uh, anyway, quite significant developments stratosphere-wise. Okay, so uh, centering temperature is still standing at 7.1 for February. Uh, that is 3.4 degrees above average. That's provisional to yesterday, to the 18th of uh, February. Very substantially, significantly uh, warm and average February. CT page at the UK Met, all a month's worth of CT going back to 1659. Here, if we come down to 2022, you will see that uh, we have January at 4.6. So January will be the coldest month of the winter. Actually, it will be not particularly cold. February will be significantly milder than that. But last time we had a 6 Celsius CT February was in 2017 at uh, 6.1. That was exceptional. We also had 2011 at uh, 6.4. Um, what am I talking about? So, uh, no, we're looking for 7s, aren't we? What am I talking about? Uh, right, so last time we had a CT uh, February in the 7s. Forget that happened. Um, was actually in 2002 when we came in at 7.0. Uh, I think, yeah, that's that's right, they're all sixes. Right, okay, so the last one was two, 2002, 7.0. So if we come in in the sevens, it will be the warmest uh, February, uh, you know, potentially since uh, since um, 2002. We also have 1998 at 7.3, and we have 1990 at 7.3 as well. They're like the warmest Februarys on record, really. So we're pushing it, you know, we really are pushing it at the moment in terms of this could be like the warmest February on record, or certainly up there uh, at the very top end of the warmest Februarys on record. We should wait and see where we come out. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at London today, so the red line 
So 30 year upper air temperature average all London. We're very zonal at the moment, so having these cooler and warmer and cooler and warmer sectors alternating with one another. There is a more definitive warmer phase around the turn of the month, and then we drop down to be close to average. There's certainly no sign there of anything that's going to particularly offset the uh, the, the uh, temperature anomalies that we've got for February at the moment. So um, I reckon there's a good chance this February could finish up in the sevens. Whether it's the warmest on record, you know, that remains to be seen. But it's certainly, I think, going to be up there with with the warmest on record anyway. Uh, in terms of precipitation, by way, so uh, quite a bit of uh, precipitation at the moment. We do get a bit of a drier interlude there through the last week of February, and then the rainfall spikes begin to come back again through the first week of March. So unsettled weather continuing into the first week of March too. Temperature anomalies on the 19th to 27th of February are coming out milder than average, above average temperature. Precipitation anomalies from the 19th to 27th of February are wetter than average through central and northern areas, but a little bit drier than average across more southern counties. The latest wind from map from Earth, nullschool.net shows that once again we're bringing in another area of low pressure. There it is over England and Wales. That's bringing a cold wet Saturday to many parts of England and Wales. We have got milder winds waiting in the winds though, just here. This is a warm front and behind that we've got milder air uh, waiting. So tomorrow we'll see the temperatures becoming milder once more. Right, so this is how the UK met Euro run. It's looking for midnight on Tuesday and a little bit of a ridge of high pressure then. Uh, so just a transient ridge ran into the next band of rain by Wednesday. Thursday, looking quite wet and windy with an uh, active cold front swinging across the country, followed by cold, showery, northwesterly winds into the end of next week. And then a little bit of a ridge starts to build up from the southwest by this time next week, which is Saturday, 26th of February. Just a slight little bump of high pressure then, bringing dry weather to England and Wales, but still quite wet and windy. Windy for Scotland and Northern Ireland. Icon also looks uh, unsettled through much of next week. Low pressure never far away. A little bit of a colder snap at the end of next week as well, with winds turning into the northwest to north. And then a ridge, <coughs> excuse me, and then a ridge of high pressure will build in its wake, bringing a reason amount of uh, dry weather by the time we get through to next weekend, potentially, although still quite a bit of activity in the Atlantic. The midnight GFS run also looks unsettled next week with low pressure continuing to push through. We tried to get a little bit of a ridge going there around day, so sort of 789. Um, but it doesn't really come too much. Low pressure just continues to drive in from off the Atlantic. Into early March, though, signs of a change. This is going through the first week of March. Uh, Miss GFS run wants to build up some higher pressure. So maybe we'll get into March and we'll go back into high pressure. That's a very long way out. 7th of March, 384 hours away. But it might be an indication that uh, through the first week of March, we begin to build up some higher pressure. That would deliver like spring-like conditions. GFS 6Z, again, looking unsettled, wet and windy through uh, much of next week. Then high pressure tries to build up from the southwest. It struggles, oh, still lots of activity, some low pressure in the Atlantic. But eventually, uh, but 6Z also builds up this ridge of high pressure and develops a spell of dry, sunny um, and probably quite warm, you know, mild weather anyway, through the first week of uh, March. It could be frost and fog night morning, of course, but by day in the uh, early March sunshine, it would feel really quite spring-like, I would have thought. But gee, yeah, um, by the way, if you enjoyed the video, and please just smash the like button to make sure you to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And drop a comment, let us know if you this and all of our videos. So uh, the GEM also looks unsettled through next week, with low pressure continuing to come in from off the Atlantic. Stays on sale all the way up to day 10, which, of course, is the 1st of March. And then the ECMWF looks like this. Again, further wet and windy weather coming up through, the, uh, through much of next week. We try to build up some higher pressure, but it doesn't really come off. Next weekend, we just keep these areas of low pressure coming right way up to uh, day 10, which is Tuesday, 1st of March. This, will, this, this is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. Plenty of rain in the south, some snow today uh, across parts of uh, Wales and northern England. More rain to come tomorrow and then into next week. Uh, we just keep the unsettled weather going, really with further bands of rain pushing through. Always colder for a little bit of snow up in the north. And then up towards day 10, we start to uh, try and turn things milder. So most of the precipitation turns to rain, but there is still rain around. So up to day 10, it is still unsettled, even if it's milder. These are the options that are on the table within the ECM Ensembles to day 4, day 10, which gets us to the 1st of March. 17 members of the ECM Ensembles with high pressure to the uh, east and low pressure to the west. So that's going to be bringing up a southwesterly wind, but will be quite 
and set up and includes the control and the operation run 17 have high pressure right over top of the country 10 taking the high pressure more towards scandinavia and perhaps seem to get a little bit of an easterly trying to get going and then seven with low pressure plowing in from off the atlantic that keeps it unsettled with the high pressure to the south and to the southeast that's quite wet and windy in a week's time in t in, in 10 day time in two weeks time these are the options that we've got will get us to the 6th of march 21 members of the ecm ensemble sort very unsettled with low pressure through the country 16 again unsettled low pressure through the country and then 14 with low pressure weight to the northwest a little bit of higher pressure to our south and southeast uh that's trying to turn things a little bit more settled but really the ecm ensemble is looking unsettled out to 6th of march which is at odds with the gfs operational output today so when we get some higher pressure going through the first week of march i think that remains to be seen very speculative at the moment uh, right, so CFS V2 finally means the 500 millibar high tone is broken down into week bits. The first week bit will take us from the 19th to 25th of February. The coming week is unsettled, of course, with low pressure in control, so plenty of wind and rain to come. Change to week two, this is the 26th of February to the 4th of March, making much more of this ridge of high pressure building up from the southwest with lower pressure getting pushed away to the northwest, so that's turning drier and milder from the south. Uh, week three has us under high pressure. This is the fifth to the eleventh of March. Proper spring weather. This uh, big ridge of high pressure dominates. Will bring lots of dry, fine, and pretty warm days. And then week four is going to be the uh, let's just highlight it. Week four will be the twelfth to the eighteenth of March. Still with high pressure dominating a little bit further south. Was perhaps trying to turn a bit more unsettled from the uh, Atlantic. But basically, that's a relatively mild spring-like type pattern. Um, into the middle section of March 2. Right, so if you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button. Make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you've this and all of our videos. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that for Gaz Weather Vids. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about Gaz Weather Get them to subscribe as well. Amazing, incredible. Thank you so much. Right, okay, that's it for today's video. Then tomorrow, 6 a.m. upload. I'll be recording that this evening. You'll be watching it tomorrow morning. Uh, so there we go. Um, and also, cat's out of the bag. Uh, and also, uh, we'll have a 10 to 14 day as well. You enjoy the rest of your Saturday. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.